Hello, welcome everyone. We can see that a lot of participants have already joined. We have about 200 participants. So thank you for being motivated and for being with us here. We definitely need you for this very practical session. So I'm going to start. My name is Masha Tarle and I work at the Covenant of Mayors office. I'm based in Brussels. And today I'm going to be the moderator of this session. And what I would like to say at the beginning is just some little remarks. First, of course, to, to welcome you, uh, as, as I already said, and also to maybe bring us back to the beginning of all of this. So back in 2008, the Covenant of Mayors has started and I was actually a trainee in the European Commission and I got to work on the first Covenant of Mayors signing ceremony. And it was really an interesting experience. I was in charge of the seating arrangements and as you can imagine, that was quite a fun and interesting task. I did get to meet a lot of the mayors. And I remember that time as a very exciting time, uh, also for me as starting out in Brussels, but in general for the Covenant of Mayors because it was the beginning of something new. It was the beginning of a vision of, of dreams. And here we are more than 10 years later and going strong and growing in ambition. And I'm very happy to see that, that that is happening. So, as I said, this was launched back in 2008. And already, of course, there was a lot of ambition to, to really achieve and exceed uh, the EU climate and energy targets. A voluntary ambition, which is important to highlight, a kind of first bottom-up approach to energy and climate action, and the success of this initiative has very quickly gone beyond expectations. We now have more than 9,000 local and regional authorities across 57 countries. And of course, we have a multi-stakeholder movement across the whole world. So we are also inspiring other cities, not only in Europe. Now the time has come for the Covenant of Mayors to really capitalize on this experience that has been gained. And um, well, of course, to, to move on and to step up the actions for a fair Europe and for a climate neutral Europe. So these are some of the key words that we will be talking about today. In the previous session, we had, of course, uh, our commissioner and we had the political board who have showed us uh, the way, who have told us their vision. And now we would like to go a little bit more into the details. So you will get a chance to hear what does it really mean for the local leaders to step up their ambitions. Also, why there is this new renewed commitment. So what is the reasoning behind it? You will also hear about how we're going to get to climate neutrality, which seems such an ambitious goal. And uh, also we're going to be talking about that concept of just transition, which can of course seem a little bit blurry. So we're going to go into a bit more details. Um, also, we're going to have, of course, a QA and a session towards the end. And we will also at one point have some breakout rooms uh, where you will be able to also ask some questions. So welcome, as I said, and uh, we will now maybe first go through the some little housekeeping if uh, it would be possible just to put on the slide i cannot see the slide here sylvia if it would be just possible to put the slide because i do not see it i think it's coming masha it's uh, on ah, okay. the browser, yeah so just some housekeeping rules while we're waiting for the slide. I can actually tell you what these housekeeping rules are. 
So basically, you've probably noticed uh, that, so some of the participants tell me that they can see the slide. Well, okay, good. So then I will just uh, read it from my other computer. Basically, you have noticed that you have been muted automatically, and we have also asked you to keep the video off. This is simply because it's a little bit easier for us to coordinate. We encourage you to, of course, edit your name as clearly as possible so that we know uh, your name and also which are the uh, city that, that you come from or the organization that you come from. If you have any questions whatsoever, any comments, please use the chat box because we do have uh, some of our staff who are looking through the chat box. And during the Q&A, we will ask you to unmute your microphone and of course put the video if you wish so that you can voice your question to the audience. The, all the presentations today are going to be available and all of uh, the recording as well is, is going to be on the eumayors.eu website. Okay, so what we're going to have now is a poll just to find out who you are because of course I would love to know the answer from all 228 participants but that would be difficult so if we can just launch the poll so that you can tell us voila the poll is there so just take some time to tell us what is your role as it refers to the covenant. Okay, so many of you have voted and as a result, we can see that, uh, well, about 30% of you are Covenant signatories. So welcome and thank you very much for your uh, effort and all the work that is involved until now. Then we have uh, some of you who are Covenant coordinators, 17%, the same amount that are Covenant supporters. A little bit less of municipalities that are not that have not signed yet, but they are interested in the covenant. And then there are many other stakeholders, which uh, we have about 43 participants, which have probably a, a wide variety of uh, profiles. So thank you very much for for this poll for participating. So I'm going to now just show you the program and also show you who the speakers are going to be. And I would like to do that with a slide, but it seems like we have some technical issues and that the slide is not working because I do not see it. We can, uh, we can see it from... Um, the... You can see it, okay. Very good. Luckily, I have another computer here, so I can see it as well. <laughs> When you change slides, I won't know, but okay. So basically, this event um, is going to be, as we said, a very practical session. The title is Stepping Up Action for a Fairer Climate Neutral Europe. I will be the moderator and we will have our um, uh, invite, invited speakers. We will start with um, Ms. Veronika Krupčikova and Mr. Brio Posnik, who are joining us from DG Ener, from the European Commission. They're working there on the Covenant of Mayors and other local initiatives. And they will be telling us about really this vision and these uh, ambitions, the why, how, what, really the, the kind of reason behind it and what is going to be achieved. Then uh, we will have the, um, our, our speakers who have come from the cities, so who work directly in cities and who will tell us concretely how they're putting these new renewed ambitions in place. Um, and so we have from the, um, the city of the Finnish city of Lahti, we have Miss Aino Kulonen, uh, we have from Barcelona, Mr. Sergi Delgado, and we have from Leuven here in Belgium, 
we have Mr. Hert van Horebeck. We will also have Lu Miss Lucy Blondel, who is from the Covenant of Mayor's office. She's the co-head of the office. She has been working at the Covenant of Mayors really from the beginning. And she will tell us uh, also some practical um, details about, uh, about the renewed commitments also as from the, from the Covenant of Mayors office. And then towards the end, we will have Ms. Mariangela Luceri, who is going to tell us uh, also more, who is actually going to respond to our concrete questions as her role is at the help desk. So this is our overview of the program. And we will now, I will pass actually the, the, the word to my uh, colleagues, Ms. Veronika Krupčikova and Mr. Brio Posnik, who are going to present their presentation, which is titled Boulder Vision Renewed Ambitions. So Veronika and Brio, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Masha. Um, I will start. Um, I will start and Veronica will follow. I just need to share my presentation. So let me just do that. And hopefully uh, tell me when you see it or make a sign. OK, good. Um, so thanks a lot, Masha, for the introduction. I think uh, I, I particularly enjoyed your, your own personal introduction to the, the topic. I think, uh, as you said, this is a, a very important initiative, uh, an initiative that has a, as, that has a history now, but, uh, but that is opening a new chapter of this history today. So we are very happy to see so many of you um, connected uh, to, to be part of this new exciting chapter of the Covenant. Um, this afternoon, uh, we'll have a short presentation, me and my colleague Veronica, uh, about uh, a bit the background of this decision. Why did we decide to, uh, to open this new chapter? And, uh, and we'll, tell a little bit you, uh, we'll tell a little bit more uh, to you about uh, what this new ambition looks like uh, in practice and, uh, and why you should join or rejoin the Covenant, uh, depending on whether you're already a signatory or not. So the first question that uh, we'll try to answer is why did we uh, raise the ambition of the covenant? So this is a decision that was taken uh, a year ago in 2020. And uh, you could say that this was uh, a series of factors that led to it. Um, the first one is that the covenant reached its first milestone uh, last year. So you have to remember that when it was first created in 2008, Covenant signatories were committing to reduce their emissions by 2020. So uh, time-wise, when we reached that date, it was a good moment to take a step back and look at what the future of the covenant was going to be. Uh, second factor, and maybe the most important in a way, um, the EU adopted uh, its European Green Deal and with it a much more ambitious energy and climate policy. So we have new objectives like cutting emissions by 55% by 2030 or reaching climate neutrality by 2050. And since the covenant is about implementing EU goals at the local level uh, so that we reach our objectives collectively, it was logical to also take that step in the covenant. Uh, so this is how the covenant uh, is today the largest and most ambitious movement of local authorities uh, on energy and climate. And this is how the government will continue being so in the future. And then a third factor, uh, which a bit maybe is a bit more uh, unforeseen, but uh, nonetheless important. Uh, Europe was, uh, and the world, of course, were hit by a pandemic, uh, which on top of costing many lives, uh, also brought a severe economic crisis to our continent. And uh, we know that we need to build back better, right? But to do so, we need to have the highest possible level of ambition uh, also locally, because this is where most of the work has to happen to put our economies back on track and to build them back in a resilient and sustainable way. Because you don't simply proclaim climate resilience by law nationwide. You actually have to, to act locally, to renovate flats, to put greenery in public spaces, to put solar panels on the roof of your local schools. So these are responsibilities of local authorities and we need to help them uh, not only with financial support, but also by making them, by making sure that they have the right level of ambition, right? So 
we needed to make uh, sure the covenant was fit for that purpose. So to sum up, you could say that the time was right uh, and the world had changed. So the covenant had to change with it. Um, I mentioned the 55% uh, and the climate neutrality targets before. Uh, these are really essential for the covenant, which is an initiative that is based on targets. But there is more to the EU energy and climate policy. Uh, with the Green Deal, we have higher ambitions, of course, uh, on what we want to achieve, but also on how we want to achieve it. So we have a renovation wave strategy that looks at building renovations. We have a just transition policy that looks at uh, energy poverty and at regions and towns that are most exposed to the transition. So we had to reflect these changes in the covenant as well, so that this is not just a quantitative jump, but also a qualitative jump in the ambition. And the last thing I'll say about the why is um, about the connection with other initiatives. The covenant is in a way the common, common ancestor to many other EU initiatives that followed. And by raising the ambition of the covenant, we also wanted to connect these initiatives better to the covenant so that cities could enjoy the benefits that these other initiatives can provide. Um, I'll only mention a few here, like the Energy Poverty, poverty adv Advisory Hub uh, that can help cities address energy poverty issues, uh, the Smart Cities Marketplace that can connect cities with uh, technology and finance providers, the Climate Pact that will help cities to build coalitions with citizens, and uh, the city's mission for 100 climate neutral cities that will provide uh, support to urban innovation to reach climate neutrality at local level. So in a way, we have a plethora of initiatives that can help cities, and we thought the covenant needed to be better connected uh, so that cities could enjoy the benefits. That's why we needed to launch this new chapter of the initiative. Now, how did we, uh, how did we make this change happen? Uh, because the covenant is, of course, an EU initiative, but it is more importantly a bottom-up initiative. So key decisions like adopting a new commitment, a uh, new commitment text, uh, they're only taken after extensive discussions and consultations with the community. So the whole process lasted roughly one year. Um, first, we surveyed our signatories. Uh, we had a survey launched last summer, which involved about 450 members, which is a significant sample. And you could say that the result of these consultations were very clear. Signatories uh, really supported the idea of raising the ambition of the covenant. After that, we used these results to uh, inform our internal discussions uh, with the Covenant of Mayor's Office, of course, but also with different city networks, with the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, which is the scientific body that helps the covenant uh, remain, uh, let's say, scientifically based, uh, with the Committee of the Regions, uh, and of course, with the political board of the Covenant, which is composed of mayors. And here again, we had uh, unanimous support for raising the ambition of the Covenant. So then we had to work out the details, of course, and agree on a new commitment text, so that my colleague Veronica will introduce in a minute. And finally, we had this text submitted to the board and to our Commissioner for Energy, Kadri Simpson, uh, for their endorsement, which took place only a few weeks ago. So this is the process we, we followed, which was quite a, a consultative and open process. And now I will pass the floor to my colleague Veronica, uh, which will give you, who will give you a snapshot of what this new coven, uh, the covenant commitment actually entails for, for cities. So Veronica, the floor is yours. Thank you, Priu, and uh, hello to everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here today with all of you. Uh, it's such, a, such an important uh, moment of our initiative. Uh, so I'll explain a bit uh, about what's new uh, with the new commitments. Uh, so at the, at the heart of the new commitments is a shared vision of becoming climate neutral by 2050. Uh, reflecting the recent uh, policies at EU level, such as the Green Deal or the Climate War, which was actually agreed upon uh, today, or uh, the Clean Energy for All Europeans package. And at the same time, um, acknowledging uh, that the situation is now uh, one of an emergency and that it requires immediate responses and that uh, climate action must be 
uh, an overarching priority to ensure a stable future for all of us. Uh, and also uh, the green transition must be just uh, for everyone and uh, leave no one behind, which means uh, that a truly successful path uh, to climate neutrality will include measures that help uh, the most vulnerable parts of our society. And we also acknowledge um, that cities themselves, they're very different. They have different paces and cap capacities. Um, and we want to ensure that the covenant is inclusive and uh, accessible for everyone. And uh, the Climate Pact uh, is an important link initi linked initiative uh, for action at local level. Uh, and linking the efforts of uh, citizens to those of local authorities. And there are already great efforts uh, going on at citizen level. Uh, and in order for these to succeed, um, it is essential to connect them uh, to action at local uh, government level. And therefore, we would uh, encourage signatories uh, to set up their own uh, local climate pacts. Uh, to engage with citizens and uh, local stakeholders and uh, all kinds of uh, green action. If we can move on uh, to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so in the text, uh, we have identified the following action points um, to achieve uh, the shared visions. So this would be first by committing uh, so setting uh, mid-term and long-term targets in line with EU objectives and at least as ambitious as the national ones uh, with an overall goal of achieving climate neutrality by 2050 and making climate action a priority. Then by engaging all levels of society, whether these are citizens, businesses, organizations, uh, governments at all levels, they need to be included in the transformation because uh, every action counts. Um, thank you. <laughs> so, and then by acting now and together uh, in order to accelerate the transition uh, by setting specific actions and plans on the path uh, to green transition and also by following up through reporting. And lastly, by networking with other mayors, with other local leaders, uh, to inspire and encourage each other in climate uh, and in energy action. So now uh, we'll move on to why uh, you should raise your ambitions. So foremost, um, to shape a common and better Europe, uh, to avert the climate risks and uh, contribute to reaching a common EU target. Uh, the local level is an essential actor in delivering the Green Deal uh, and our policies can only succeed uh, with your help. And at the same time, uh, by joining, signatories themselves can shape EU and national policy frameworks in climate and energy. Uh, and as my colleague already explained, uh, the incentive to update the covenant commitments actually came uh, from our signatories. And then uh, in recent years, uh, there has been an unprecedented demand uh, for reducing the risks of climate change uh, on the ground. Uh, and by renewing their ambitions, uh, senatories would demonstrate their firm commitment uh, to reaching climate neutrality uh, to their citizens and uh, to their voters. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, of course, this is there is a great benefit of joining the world's largest movement of cities uh, engaged in climate and energy action, which has now truly become a community, which is a voluntary initiative. It is led entirely by cities, um, where cities work together, inspire each other and uh, learn from each other. And I can say that at the Commission, uh, we are very proud of this initiative and uh, we are very impressed uh, with the ideas and dedication at local level, uh, whether this is through um, employment of renewable energy, building bike lanes and clean transport, renovating buildings or even recycling schemes. Um, and we believe that these actions deserve visibility and the covenant is a great way 
uh, for cities to gain visibility for their actions uh, and also gain a stronger voice uh, on the international scene. At the same time, uh, it is a good uh, possibility to get connected to other EU initiatives, uh, such as the Renovation Wave, Climate Pact, uh, Energy Poverty, uh, etc., as already explained by, by my colleague. Thank you. I think that would be all for, from us for now. <laughs> Indeed, back to you, uh, Masha. We'll be happy to answer questions uh, when the time comes. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, told that there is a little um, technical issue, so um, the microphone is not uh, unmuted. But I'll, I think I'll, I'll take over um, while we while we solve these technical issues, just by indeed uh, um, getting you through the second uh, session. So yeah, I have managed. I have managed. <laughs> oh, great, excellent. Then I'll pass the floor back to our Marsha. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was really uh, one of these panic moments where you want to speak and you cannot, <laughs> but thank you. You have given me my voice again. So thank you very much, Veronica and Brio, for this very uh, clear presentation, very clear overview of the reasons. So I think if someone was not uh, convinced by now, this was really a good overview to be convinced to join. It's probably a very good time to join for those who have not joined yet. But it was also, I think, a very good positive uh, sign to the signatories to really acknowledge the work that they have been doing, the great work that they've been doing on a voluntary basis, and to really say that indeed we are one community. If there is one thing that I remember from this presentation and I think should be highlighted, it was the four key words of commit, engage, act, and the network. And it's really good to see an initial, initially policy kind of initiative that has been translated into such concrete keywords as these. So I hope that we will always keep these keywords in mind. And when we think of, okay, what is the covenant and what are we supposed to do, that those four keywords come to the front. So thank you very much. I'm going to continue now. We have now our concrete examples so of persons who are working very hard in the cities to really translate these uh, new commitments. So we will have uh, three speakers and I'm going to immediately give the floor to Ms. Aino Kulonen, so from Finland, from the city of Lahti, which is a rather, let's say, small not or mid-sized city, however, with a very big ambition um, this city has been, um, is actually the European Green Capital in 2021, so congratulations for that. And um, the city has already joined the Covenant in 2012, and they immediately decided that they would be carbon neutral by 2025. So very ambitious city from Finland, so I know the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Masha. Good afternoon, everybody. I'll, I still need to share my screen. Let's see. Anyway, while I'm doing this, I'm sending my greetings from Lahti in southern Finland. And as Masha already mentioned, we are a mid sized city. And uh, I think often the sort of climate champions are relatively large cities, but most of the European citizens live in mid-sized cities like, like we do. So I think a lot of, a lot of you might have, uh, might be interested in learning from us in Lahti, how we do it. Okay, I think you should be able to see my screen now. Correct, good. Uh, so Lahti is the European Green Capital this year, 21, and uh, this title is a result of our very long-term environmental work in the city 
that was started already in the 70s. Uh, there has been very strong political commitment to this environmental work across the sectors. And uh, we also aim for climate neutrality already in 25, which is already in four years. We joined the Covenant of Mayors already in 12, uh, 2012. And uh, when we are asked what actually brought us to this very bold decision of aiming carbon neutrality already in 25, the answer is exactly this long commitment, political commitment and long history, which, uh, which gave us, the, yeah, gave us the, also a bit of more pressure, but also the commitment to, to try this. Uh, today, I was invited to share our ideas about driving a transformational change towards climate neutrality. So in our climate action plan, we list over 100 measures that the city is taking to decrease the emissions. But of course, not all of them are equally important in short term, especially. So in the next few minutes, I will share the most important measures and actions that we take to, to reach this target. Uh, OK, so here you see the emission trend of our city. This is the production-based emissions. Our goal is to cut our carbon house gas emissions by 80% by 25 uh, compared to the 1990 levels. Uh, so this year, 21, we are estimating that we have already decreased emissions by 70%. So we are already quite close there to our target. And what is interesting is, of course, what actually what these remaining emissions consist of. And it is, uh, it used to be mostly energy production, but uh, now it is shifting more and more towards the, the transport sector. So that's where the most pressure lies at the moment. Uh, but shortly about the energy sector first. So one specific initiative and action that has been crucial for getting this far was taken in the local district heating production. The company that provides the district heating is owned by the city. And the city decided that to gradually replace burning coal by burning biomass and energy waste. This decision to invest in these new boilers and new technology was, of course, it was a climate action, but there were also financial reasons behind. So it was already then estimated that in long term, burning coal might actually get quite expensive. So uh, in the energy sector, we were able to make this one big action that uh, could could actually provide us a lot of potential to decrease emissions. But for all the remaining emissions, this is not really the case. There are actually no, no more easy points or lower hanging roots, fruits left in Lahti. Uh, and as I already said, the greatest potential really lies in the transport sector because this is where the remaining emissions are. So if I start from the from this pink corner of the slide. Uh, at the moment, we are very busy with our mobility actions that are listed in the city's sustainable urban mobility plan. This plan consists of over 20 concrete initiatives and actions, measures that should take us toward more practical, more healthy urban mobility with also lower emissions and a system that would also serve the needs of all the citizens. Uh, and this, this plan and these actions are considered, for instance, in the city master plan. Uh, we are also investing in, in infrastructure that allows this, like bicycle routes that allow biking also in our hopefully snowy winters already in the future. And our goal is that the share of the sustainable mobility would be over 50% in the city area. Okay, so if we go here, this is public transport. It is a very important part of the sustainable mobility. And this is also where the city can still do something. So we can have a direct effect by shifting all the public transport to electricity and biogas. Biogas is also a local product here in Lahti. So we try to use that as much as or support that as much as possible. And uh, finally, so lucky for us, we are not a very densely populated city, not as like many of the European cities. Uh, this is great for us because we have much more green around us. But also it means that we do have long distances and it means that we will not get rid of private cars. Uh, 
not in, in a long time at the moment, I would say. So um, what we need to do is we need to facilitate the growth of the electric fleet and the development of the electronic car charging networks. This is not solely a job of the city, also the actions and regulations from the national government, they play a big, relatively big role here, but we can try to accelerate this trend by offering the citizens, companies, housing cooperatives, information, for instance, about the incentives that are available at the moment. And uh, yeah, although we have this list and a big program with over 100 measures, when we think about the goal of reaching carbon neutrality already by 25, it really goes down to a very few actions where we still can get a very, that are still effective and can get us there. And these are really here in this picture. Uh, but of course, the rest will help us to reach even more ambitious goals in the future, thinking beyond 2025. Thank you, Aina. Yeah, thank thank you. you very much. So it was uh, very interesting exactly what you said just towards the end. And this is something I wanted to ask you. So you said that for your for reaching this uh, climate neutrality, you had a list of a lot of actions. And in the end, you realized that it was really about some concrete actions where you had to put maybe more effort in. Uh, can you just tell us how does one start? How does a city start to actually um, to, to think about becoming climate neutral what are the um, what would be your advice how to start thinking about it and conceptualizing it and creating the actions that are necessary well i think it's a, a very important point is that you set very ambitious goals from the beginning on because this will accelerate the whole process and also to think from the beginning on that this is not a work of the environmental sector of the city. This is a work that needs to be done all over the city organization and also in the companies that are possibly connected to the, to the city. And to, to make sure that it's everywhere, I think you need to, you really need to put it high in the high political papers of the, of the city. If possible, you should put it in the strategy and then make sure that the actions uh, are actually, they are actually in the city strategy and they are in the annual budget and plan of the city so that you actually will also have the resources to think about it. And for the, for the planning part, I think it's very important that, that you build a group of, of like experts, not only from the environmental sector, but of course, from, from also from the other groups in the city or, or the, the staff of the city. And so that it's not work of one person, but spread across the organization. Thank you. And in terms of this kind of engaging the stakeholders, um, how did you go about when it came to one of you? Well, you said now that the transport sector is where you will be introducing um, hopefully more actions. How do you go about engaging the transport sector? Uh, by this, you mean the citizens and the Sorry? Uh, do you mean the citizens uh, or? The transport sector actually more, uh, the, the sector itself. Uh, mm, yeah. So the organizations, the, the companies that, that are relevant. Yeah. So how do you so these, engage them? Yeah, so for our sustainable urban mobility plan, there was a relatively large working group that exactly consisted of people from different, from different uh, important stakeholders. Partly, a lot of these were from, from the city itself, but also for the companies that provide the transport. And there were also I think, consultants included in the process. But there was also a panel of citizens that, were, that was able to provide feedback to okay, the plan. So that's a good advice as well, to, yeah. have, to involve a panel of citizens who can be constantly watching and observing. Very good. OK, well, thank you very much, Aino. Thank you. And we are going now to uh, Sergi Delgado from Barcelona. So Barcelona was, of course, one of the first uh, signatories, actually. And uh, Sergi works at Barcelona City Council. He works at the Energy Observatory. I know because he told me yesterday that he has a passion for data. So I don't know if that's going to be also maybe something he will mention in his presentation. Uh, but Sergi, 
the, the floor is yours. You will tell us about uh, the just transition, which is, of course, another element of these renewed mm -hmm. commitments. We discussed climate neutrality. We are going now to the topic of just transition and how Barcelona is managing this just transition. Okay, thanks, Masha. I'm sharing my presentation. Okay. Okay, so as well as Masha introduced, uh, I'm going to speak a bit about, uh, well, an overview on the progress of the just climate transition in the city of Barcelona. And so first of all, we need a, a bit of context as I like data. So <laughs> I give you a couple of, uh, of uh, intro context uh, issues here, uh, which are uh, the energy poverty in Barcelona defined as uh, the possibility to the heat and refrigerator uh, having enough access to to water is uh, nowadays 10.6%, uh, which means that uh, not uh, not having it or or also having difficulties to uh, have access to these uh, three services, uh, which could be uh, natural gas, electricity, and, and and tap water, and that's important. Uh, just because we are doing an energy transition, there are many energy issues here, so we we have not to forget uh, about these people. So, and this figure uh, here in the top, uh, these, uh, this, this, these names are the districts of Barcelona, and uh, to the top uh, it means uh, income, and to the right the energy poverty. So there's a clear difference between them. So. It's very important to know this data, to have this data, and put the city council where we need the most to, to, to transition uh, with the whole society. And then, uh, as the main uh, goals <laughs> we have in the world, in the world, in Europe, uh, with, with tackling climate change, uh, the Climate Plan and the Emergency Declaration of, of Barcelona has four axes, uh, which are mitigation, uh, adaptation and resilience, uh, which are the, the ones that we all have. Uh, we have uh, to lower the 50% of the 1992 emissions, the Olympic year uh, for 2030, and the aim to be carbon neutral at uh, 2050. And we also want to promote the citizen action where is where it's possible and we have the fourth pillar which is climate justice aiming to remove energy poverty by 2030 and also getting a hundred percent of clean funding because uh we also have to get a bit responsible of what we do outside the city and that's not a good idea to get funding to to this energy and transition climate change and mitigation and adaptation with uh, I mean, uh, corporations or uh, or our funding sources that uh, invest in fossil fuels or weapons on this kind of uh, things that uh, doesn't uh, that doesn't have a responsibility uh, worldwide. So going fast to the concrete measures that uh, um, what all this means in Barcelona, we have some main points to comment. Uh, for instance, the refurbishment of uh, 100,000 dwellings. Uh, this is very important because uh, these dwellings are not, has not the quality it should have because they are very old. Barcelona is a almost constructed city from six many years. And these dwellings that have a, a Poorer uh, laws or, or construction laws in in the moment they, they were made uh, are in the districts I mentioned before, which are the the ones we have uh, that have more problems to to well to to tackle with this energy poverty. And one of the reasons is the quality of these constructions because uh, they need a important refurbishment and the the bills are quite uh, expen quite more expensive that than in other parts of the city, at least the basics or the minimum energy or water you need. And there are a couple of plans uh, here in this refurbishment of dwellings, which are urban regeneration, which is kind of a neighborhood plan where there are necessities to renovate uh, entire neighborhoods. Uh, 
we go there and uh, there are many, many buildings that has, uh, for instance, structural uh, problems. And this is a big opportunity to uh, also put some energy issues there and trying to uh, contribute to uh, cheaper builds because of energy uh, refurbishments. And also we're trying to, to, to add here uh, renewable generation accessible to these neighborhoods that normally they don't have these uh, incomes to, to, well, to, to put some solar PV installations, for instance. And we're in these high complexity buildings that says the, the slide, there are a few but uh, that have very, very bad situations. So the public contribution must be 100% because those families can't afford anything, uh, what they need to simply live to, comf to live comfortably and with access to this energy. And we know that probably uh, it must cause a and more- Genji, I'm sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. but we need to finish up. Okay. So yes, the, the other measures are Barcelona Energia, uh, which makes some guidance to citizens to, to improve their bills. It's a public marketer of electricity. There are attention offices to, to avoid cutoffs and also to, to help people to access to all the other measures. And these climate shelter spaces are uh, places where people can, can shelter uh, when, for instance, in the future, we're studying and where, where to put it concretely. And these climate shelter spaces uh, where, for instance, if there's a heat wave, uh, there will be 16 more times heat waves than now <laughs> due to climate change. These uh, people could go there if uh, at home, for instance, there are some problems to to be well, a bit uh, fresh, for instance, in summer. Thank you, Sergi. So sorry to interrupt, but um, no <laughs> we have uh, had to do this very shortly. However, I think you did, of course, this is only the beginning of everything you could mm -hmm. tell us, right? Because this could be uh, definitely a presentation in itself. Uh, for a long time, we could discuss this. But what I have picked up is that you have started with data. You have started with observing mm -hmm. what's going on, what the problem, you have really kind of dissected the problem in, in data so that you know exactly what the issue is. Um, and you have looked into, on one hand, refurbishment ambitions, on another hand, some concepts such as having a climate shelter, very interesting. And I'm assuming because, of course, you didn't finish uh, all the rest, but there's a lot of citizen points and a lot of attention giving to, to informing citizens and helping them with, uh, with certain decisions. Mm -hmm. If I could just pose one question, it would be, how do you know that your city, Barcelona, is on a good path when it comes to just transition? How do you measure that? How do you know that you're doing well? So we do just started because the climate plan has uh, two years old, but uh, the thing is uh, trying to monitor this data that allowed to make this map. Uh, so you need this attention points also in the territory where you can tackle a bit uh, if there are more problems or less. So of course, there are some, some things that escape to the radar, but in general terms, you know, uh, with enough infrastructure in every neighborhood, uh, what's going on there. So, and as we know, uh, in which neighborhoods uh, we have to go, uh, there are plans to, to, to advance. And of course, we don't forget about the others, but uh, as we are now there and have the rather there, we can, well, more or less measure uh, more or less at which point are we're advancing so thank you so you it's, have chosen... it, it, it's it's aligned with the 2030 agenda because that's one of the main uh, targets also very good so you have chosen really to uh, localize and to yeah put your focus on those specific neighborhoods so that you can measure from time to time and evaluate whether things are going better and of course using mm -hmm. data I'm, I'm sure using surveys and 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 things like that very good. Well, thank you very much, Sergi. So I also invite, of course, anyone who's interested to contact you uh, to know more and to exchange on experiences. 
We are now going to go to our uh, next speaker. So we have Hert van Horenbeck, who is from Belgium, and he is from uh, sustainability and advisor in the city of Leuven. So Leuven signed the covenant in 2011, and they almost immediately were very ambitious and they immediately said they wanted to be climate neutral. So what we're going to see now is um, really their experience of a local climate pact. So Hert, the floor is yours. You have you. five minutes, so more or less until yeah. uh, 4.05. Yeah. Okay, um, like I said, I'm gonna uh, tell you on how we uh, involved all stakeholders and how um, we elaborate our climate uh, policy together with uh, all stakeholders. So climate policy in Leuven, it started with the Covenant of Mayors in 2011, but also with the pronunciation of the ambition to become climate neutral, become a, be, become a climate neutral city by 2030. So based on a good experience we already had from a, a network on sustainability, we also elaborated all the, the climate action plans and the preparation of the SEAP, et cetera, uh, as a quadruple helix. So we involved uh, all stakeholders in all the different cornerstones in the preparation of those uh, climate uh, action plans. So our challenge was, our, our goal was, how can we create ownership for the implementation of all those uh, climate action plans uh, in all society? So in order to involve all those stakeholders, we created the NGO Leuven 2030. We established the NGO 2030, which is really a structural cooperation, not ad hoc, but the structural cooperation between all different stakeholders in uh, society. Uh, first, based on that scientific report, later on that roadmap 2050 uh, that uh, we all elaborated and we want to uh, implement. So the mission, um, of, those, uh, of, of this NGO um, is to promote climate policy throughout the, uh, the urban community and through the implementation of uh, that uh, roadmap. So the tasks of the, the NGO is to coordinate across all stakeholders, activate, activating uh, leadership, creating ownership in, in whole society, also giving that scientific support, giving uh, sight to where we have to go to, and of course, very much also communication and uh, race awareness on, uh, on climate policy. Later, a few years later, um, much more focus was put on um, supporting all the actors by, by providing uh, funding, exploring new initiatives, exploring new collaborations, um, and also on developing a network of uh, like-minded uh, cities. So this collaboration was uh, done through a lot of projects, in the beginning rather small projects, uh, later more strategic experiments, breakthrough projects um, coming from all sides. And sometimes um, we had some program facilitators on that roadmap, uh, which um, came on with a lot of uh, new uh, um, pro uh, projects and programs. So the results are very uh, promising. We have a lot of um, projects like Elena with European Investment Bank. We have large circulation plans. We have pro uh, plans on uh, spatial planning. We have large European projects, some arising in 2020s like uh, Pop Machina, also projects on climate, like uh, just uh, nature, etc. We also have a lot of uh, recognition with uh, the European Green Leaf Award with iCapital. Um, so we, we, I, I think that this collaboration is really doing uh, well. But the aim is also um, that this, this network is uh, a road preparer. It has to pave the way for new solutions. So not only uh, accelerate and, and uh, facilitate or, or improve or scale up, solutions in the existing uh, framework, the existing uh, context uh, which uh, is based on existing rules and regulation and financial um, plans, et cetera, and the, the, the actual mindset, but also try to, to broaden the playing field 
by uh, tackling the, 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 uh, the, that context, uh, make sure that new uh, political um, bo uh, regulations, new financial uh, means are, um, are found. So um, we also have to test solutions in, in that new um, playing field. Um, so in the future, um, we as a city, thanks to the, that network and thanks to the, the work that we do together with the NGO, we can integrate more projects to larger programs and we can uh, focus on more uh, integrated urban policy with larger projects, larger programs. And the role of the NGO of that network is then um, challenge that system, uh, make sure that that system change um, can be made so that that transition to a new um, climate neutral society uh, where um, all, all stakeholders can, can give input and, and this new way of thinking and uh, the NGO can, can make sure that they learn from this new way of thinking, can implement new kind of, of uh, programs and um, uh, help the city and help all the other stakeholders to be, become climate neutral by 2050. So thank you. Thank you, Hert, very much. So. I very much uh, appreciated the fact that you really outlined here the, the importance of getting everyone on board. And what was interesting and special about Leuven was that you decided to um, motivate all the stakeholders and to yes, put, of course, responsibility of, on each one, but also um, create a new structure, as you said, this NGO, this network a structure that actually has its vision, but where that actually also encompasses all these stakeholders. So they are part of this structure. It's not something outside of them, but actually they're all part of it because you all need to, to move together to, to get these, of course, uh, climate action plans actually happen. And it was also very interesting that then all the projects you have, all the programs you have, you all put them all together so that they're all related, that they're all integrated. It's, it's really good. And of course, we will be um, very interested to see what are the radical climate actions uh, that you are announcing. <laughs> so that would be something to, to watch out for. Um, if you had to maybe give some advice, Hert, to other um, sustainability advisors in other cities, uh, maybe not in Belgium, but in other countries as well, what, would you, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, I think in, I, I've been in quite a lot of cities uh, doing to that uh, Green Leave Award. In every city, it's possible to collaborate with uh, NGOs, with uh, universities, with, with uh, educational. So start small, work together, facilitate uh, each other, make sure that, that um, you, you all share that ambition and, and work. And th this network, it will broaden. And, uh, and it will broaden very fast because um, it's really, uh, there are a lot of synergies in, in uh, working there. And um, that, that's, for us, for Leuven, it really worked out very well. So uh, try to start small and uh, scale up as fast as you can. Thank you very much. So thank you to all the speakers and uh, we really wish all the best and good, uh, so very good results so far and continue like that to the cities of Lahti, Barcelona and Leuven. And of course, to all the other cities that are with us today and that maybe didn't speak today, but of course we, we do want to hear from you in the chat. And we will now have a second poll just to ask you about your, whether your city is committed to any of the following actions. So if you could please just quickly fill that. Okay, so we already see that the majority of the participants are saying that their city has committed to climate neutrality. So ambitious, very good, in line with the new ambitions. 
Um, the next one would be other, which we don't know exactly what, but of course there's many other actions, I'm sure. And then the just transition and energy poverty have been a bit less we can see on the agenda. So hopefully we can address these as well. Thank you very much for this, uh, for participating. We are now going to continue with our next speaker, who is my colleague, uh, Lucy Blondel from the Brussels uh, office here, uh, the Covenant of Mayors office. And Lucy will give us an overview, a presentation really of uh, the kind of practical implications for you, the cities of this uh, document, of this new commitment. So, Lucy, the, the floor is yours. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. I was also looking for the unmute button, obviously. <laughs> But it's a great pleasure to be with you today and uh, indeed to tell you a bit more um, about the covenant commitments. Um, I think we have already heard a lot uh, from our city representatives and it was really good to, to, to have such a very inspiring examples and I hope you have uh, um, got a lot uh, as the takeaways from, from this first presentations. Before starting, um, let me take you back for a moment um, just to show you how much uh, the covenant uh, of mayors has evolved over the years, in particular its COP and, and which of actions. Since uh, 2008, the covenant, which was originally a European initiative, has grown into a worldwide city movement. It has secured the commitment of 10,000 local and regional leaders, 10,000. This is an impressive figure. And I think today is really a good opportunity to also celebrate what, what we have achieved, let's say, together. Now, covenant signatories do not only pledge to cut their um, greenhouse gas emissions, they also pledge to improve their resilience to climate change and to tackle energy poverty while still ensuring a just transition. And as you can see through this slide in the end, this is not the first time the covenant is reinventing itself, and it's most likely not the last one. And I think in our current challenging context, um, it's, it's good to uh, see that the covenant is a very flexible initiative, adjustable to your needs, to your priorities, and to a changing context. All these further developments, uh, we hope, help to best support you uh, on the ground. You, the cities, were leading the way while planning um, the recovery. Um, I wanted to um, get back to the EU policy context. You have um, already heard a bit from, from our colleagues Brieu and Veronica, but uh, we know by experience that cities usually struggle to understand how to connect their local ambitions and actions to what is actually produced by the EU policymakers. And I think the covenant is, is really about creating a bridge between the, the different levels of governance and also about translating the EU policies and related targets into a clear long-term roadmap that every city's, city can follow. And as you can see through this visual, the initiative is very much embedded in the EU climate and energy policies, as well as with the international sustainability agenda. Mainly the European Green Deal, the European Climate Pact, they have already mentioned, but also the Paris Agreement and, and the Sustainable Development Goals. All, all this frames cities and regions' new priorities and ultimately the ones of the Covenant Europe. You can see climate neutrality, leaving no one behind, circular economy. This is all these new concepts that are now being um, pushed forward um, with the renewed covenant commitment. Um, in terms of 
um, scope, the Covenant Initiative continues focusing on its three pillars, mitigation, adaptation and energy poverty. However, with the renewed commitment, signatories are also encouraged to integrate so socially just transitions, consideration as a core cross-cutting principle in their climate ambitions and their climate plans. To translate their ambitious commitments into locally relevant solutions, signatories pledge to undertake a, a transformational change in all sectors of our society, ranging from buildings, transport, waste, to the environment and, and biodiversity. I think signatories and, and cities in general are usually well uh, advanced uh, on the mitigation side. They're therefore invited to intensify their actions on the remaining two pillars. And uh, obviously the covenant office and therefore um, the team I'm representing today, we are going to work um, closely with our partners to make sure we diversify also our offer on these two pillars and make sure that you are well supported on, on those fronts. In terms of um, city journey, uh, we know that it's different from, from one city to another, but the covenant steps uh, remain the same for, for all. Um, you're invited, uh, well, you're committing when joining the, the Covenant Initiative to uh, setting targets, assessing baseline and developing an action plan within two years following the formal signing of the initiative. You are also undertaking to monitor and report progress every two years. This is also quite well known now. What I would like to highlight here is that um, with the renewed commitments, uh, the covenant shifts focus away from targets and processes um, per se, towards the real implementation of concrete actions on the ground. In particular, the covenant signatories are invited to further engage local stakeholders and further, and further network with their peers, working together on, on the main challenges. In terms of methodological uh, framework and what we can offer as a support, we will also make sure to consolidate the guidance we offer over the coming months and in particular on the energy poverty pillar. We are, um, for instance, going to develop a set of indicators that you will be able to, to use but also some other extra support tools um, that will hopefully uh, support you in your process, tools that are specifically designed for cities. I also wanted to get back to the governance structures because you had the chance to finally see the faces of our board members during the first part of the lunch event. And I hope you were all there to see them uh, symbolically um, renewing their commitments and, and showing the example. I think the covenant board is, is really um, um, key uh, and it's in a way the political face of the entire covenant community. It politically steers the covenant movement. It's, it's really the one setting the strategic orientation of, of, of the initiative. This board is now seconded by mayors acting as ambassadors in their country and this is also very new and this is uh, what uh, let's say, uh, consolidate the, the political um, component of the initiative. Those ambassadors uh, have been appointed with the support of the Committee of the Regions, and they're actually uh, exchanging uh, when, um, as we speak uh, uh, right now in a, in, a, in a parallel session. And um, they will help us to, to further embed, let's say, the, the covenant in, in national um, frameworks. In terms of very concrete actions that we do with the board members, we recently uh, met the EU commissioners for energy, Ms. Simpsons, when we were discussing this uh, renewed ambitions. 
uh, and we will soon meet um, the EU Commissioner for um, Cohesions and Reforms, Ms. Ferreira. And this really help um, to voice, let's say, your needs and, and your expectations. In terms of um, further embedding the, the covenant in, in, um, at the national level, we have also strengthened um, our dialogue with national stakeholders. And I think this is also important to highlight because it helps us to better embed covenant processes um, in the national context, as I said, but also boosting synergies. We work with covenant ambassadors national and regional institutions, association of uh, national association of cities and regions. And they are all together key allies in, in this process, setting up supportive legal and, and financial environments for your local action. This is really reinforcing the multi-level governance model we have put in place. And it really represents a unique opportunity to build a bridge between your local actions plan and the one set at a more national level, linking, for instance, the, um, the CECAPs, Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plans, with the NECPs, but also with the National Recovery and Resilience Plans. And we hope that uh, you as uh, local leaders are, really much, are very much consulted throughout all this process. Um, to conclude, I'm just going to reiterate our invitation to raise your ambitions and step up your climate and energy actions by signing the new covenant commitment text. It may sound as very high, too high maybe, but I think it's a necessary commitment. I was um, discussing with the mayor just a few days ago, and he told me this is not about what we can do, but what we must do. And I really hope that you will all see it the same way. Today, we are just kickstarting the renewal of the covenant commitments, but in October, we will have, as usual, of, it's a prestigious signing ceremony where you will all be invited to uh, also come and declare uh, your commitments. And this online ceremony this year will be complemented with um, by many other satellite events in your respective country and region. So we really hope you will join us uh, at that um, occasion. And uh, we invite you to stay tuned for, for more information. Thanks a lot for, for your attention. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you very much. So what I think all of us get from this uh, presentation is, of course, an invitation to step up, to really uh, put all our efforts and strengths into making all these new ambitions happen. And uh, of course, this idea that there will be a new uh, ceremony for signatories, and that's always exciting, even if this one is going to be online, even if we will not need to make a seating arrangement for this one. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, if uh, there will be other ones in the future, that, that might be necessary. So thank you very much, Lucy, because this uh, is, is clearly showing us the way. And we will now just have a very quick little poll, which is just a yes and no. So if we can launch the poll, which is, would your city be ready to renew its ambitions and step up its actions as part of our Covenant of May? well, Covenant of Mayor's Europe initiative. So would you be ready to renew your ambitions? So luckily I can see we have most saying yes. There is a little bit of those who are saying, I don't know, and a very small minority saying no directly. That would also be interesting to know why not. So hopefully, that could be also discussed in the questions that we, we have now. And we are now going to have a Q&A session because you have sent us a lot of questions already. And for the Q&A session, I'm going to introduce um, another colleague at the Covenant of Mayor's office. Uh, so this is uh, Maria Angela Luceri. I hope that I have said the name right now. <laughs> yeah. So Mariangela uh, 
you, I have, uh, I'm assuming you have collected some of the questions during this session. So if you can tell us please what these questions are. Of course, I also want to introduce that at the help desk, there are also other colleagues as well. Um, but if you could maybe, Mariangela, just tell us quickly what these questions were. Thank you. Yes, indeed. I will uh, hopefully answer to most of the questions through these very quick slides. So let's start with the simple questions, how to join the Covenant of Mayors. Uh, there are two quick steps. First of all, the mayor or uh, other relevant political representative shall sign the commitment document that was presented earlier by Lucy. Sorry, I have a pull that I cannot see my slide. And the second step uh, is uh, the online registration. So submitting your registration to online form. Once the Covenant of Mayors receives your registrations and approves it, you receive uh, the credentials to access the online, online platform called My Covenant. And we create a public profile for your municipality on our websites, both Covenant of Mayors Europe website and Global Covenant of Mayor. Municipalities that are already registered to the Covenant of Mayors Europe do not need to sign again. They simply need to renew their commitments on how to do so. The first step is exactly the same. The mayor shall sign the commitment document, and then you shall simply uh, enter your profile on my covenant and click on a button called renew. Who shall sign the commitment and when? Signatories that committed before uh, 20. 2015 and that are committed to a target of 20% reduction of CO2 emissions by 2020 are kindly requested to uh, re renew their commitment as soon as possible because their target basically expired last year. Signatories instead that uh, joined after 2015 or that renewed their commitment to 2030, they can, of course, uh, uh, renew their commitments at any time and so commit to 2050, in particular, if they want to change their midterm targets. What target shall be chosen? The Covenant of Mayors Europe recognizes that EU member states, regions and municipalities are at different stages of the energy transitions and that they face different challenges in their path to climate neutrality. This is why uh, we leave uh, municipalities free to define what is the highest mid-term target that they can achieve and by when. In line with what uh, presented earlier, we invite everyone to commit to at least 55% of greenhouse gases emissions reduction by 2030, with the objective of reducing such emissions by 80% by 2050 and therefore reach climate neutrality by 2050. It shall be noted that uh, next year European Union member states will release their national targets and Covenant of Mayors will adjust its requirement accordingly. In particular, we will set minimum target to reach European Union country. So does the renewal of commitment affect your current reporting on my covenant? No, or at least not necessarily. First of all, we are developing an archive section where everything you report will be stored so that you can easily keep track of what's submitted in the platform. Signatories that are currently reporting on the achievements of their CAP, so their, their action plan with 2020 targets, can still do so and are kindly invited to submit their final monitoring report by 2023. Signatories instead that have already submitted their CCAP, so their action plan with 40% target, can still monitor on its implementations, as well as signatories that are still developing their action plan with 40% targets by 2030 can still submit it through the platform and then monitor on its implementation. But what does change? First of all, we are slightly adjusting the current reporting template to address it to the new long-term targets for 2050. New signatories and signatories that directly pass from a 2020 target to a 2050 target will immediately have available this new adjusted reporting template. Signatories instead that uh, 
are currently committed with the 2030 targets have two options. They can either decide to use uh, the current reporting template uh, and so keep using their action plan if they think that uh, the actions included in the action plan are enough to reach the new targets that they set. Of course, they can adjust these actions. Otherwise, they can decide to submit a new action plan and therefore use the new reporting template. As we are already in 2021, we know that there are some regional authorities that act as covenant uh, coordinators that already developed uh, regional strategies to 2030 and that have already allocated financial resources to it. If uh, within these regional strategies, these authorities have set some specific requirements for their municipalities and these requirements are linked with uh, the old commitment document, so the one stating uh, 40% uh, uh, reduction of CO2 emissions by 2030. Please contact us and let us know your requirements by the end of June so that we can support you and we can still accept uh, uh, registrations or renewal of commitments uh, using the old form coming from these territories. So finally, what about coordinators and supporters? Um, do they need to report to do they need to renew their commitments? No, they don't, because coordinators and supporters do not commit to a specific target, and therefore their commitment is considered automatically renewed. What we want from them is just to keep in touch with us and let us know that you still want to be part of the community, and in particular, please participate in our annual service, such as the one that we will launch in the coming months. And from my side, Masha, it's everything, so I give you back the floor. Thank you. And Mariangela, did you have any specific questions that you received in the chat that you would like to address? Um, yes. If you could also say from whom the question was. So we have a question, I think, from... Sorry, Julie, I ask for your support in this because I cannot find uh, the question that we selected earlier. Sure, hi. Um, so I think the, the questions already have been addressed from, from uh, Veronica, from Elena, and Dario, Tatiana, and Naima. These you have addressed in your slides previously. Uh, then we have um, a question from uh, Pedro, um, asking about um, what the percentage of cities and regions are that assume the 2020 commitment and have then submitted the monitoring report. Yes, I leave uh, my colleagues Miguel or Elodie to answer to these questions. Thank you. Um, regarding the um, Miguel here from the, from the Commandant of Mayor's Office. Um, regarding the municipalities who had to report and monitor reports, um, um, municipalities committed to uh, till now we have um, more than uh, 205, 2,500 municipalities who have so has um, um, delivered a monitoring report uh, till now. Um, and the other question I I don't remember the other question. Can you repeat, please? Uh, yes. So, um, what is the average of CO two emissions reductions by all signatories? Do we know this? Yeah, exactly. Um, the um, yeah, um, municipalities are going beyond the, the the goals, and now we can say the the average reduction of the municipalities is around. Uh, 28% uh, percent for all the municipalities in the, in the, in the covenant uh, till now. Uh, taking account the, the deliver, uh, the deliver reports uh, till the last year. And then we had one question from Hans Peter Winkelmann. Um, what happens actually to signatures in the case of non-compliance? Um, because only some are suspended, he says. 
Yes, indeed. We will soon uh, relaunch uh, the suspension procedures of the current of Mayors Europe, meaning that uh, signatories that uh, um, do not submit the action plan according to the deadline and do not ex um, ask for an extension to the deadline will be suspended. However, these suspensions only means that their public profile on the current of Mayors will be grayed out but they will still be able to use the MyCovenant platform and of course to submit the action plan, restoring uh, uh, their activation on MyCovenant and on the public profile. Thank you, Anjali. If there are, I mean, I'm sure there are many other questions, <laughs> but I would just like to maybe call in here, if you agree as well, uh, Brio and Veronica, uh, so from DG Enner, because they have been asked two specific questions. And if Brio, you could just tell us what the question was and, and then the answer. Thank you. Sure, Masha. Um, thanks for the floor. I think there were two questions or like many questions that were uh, sort of bundled in two topics uh, from Paul and Cecile and uh, David about, uh, first of all, the link between the Covenant and the European Energy Awards or the Citergy uh, equivalent in France. So uh, I have mean, a very relevant question. I think our goal uh, with the Covenant is to try to um, minimize, let's say, the effort required from cities in terms of reporting and, uh, and, and, and monitoring. So whenever we can uh, sort of find an equivalence with another platform, uh, we, we do. Um, that's why we have been discussing with the uh, European Energy Awards for a, a few months uh, or years even now uh, on how to do this best uh, so that we could actually have a sort of uh, automatic equivalence between the two so that you don't need to choose between the two initiatives, but you can actually be part of the covenant if you report through the European Energy Awards. Uh, this is work ongoing. Uh, there are some technical, let's say, uh, like things to be adjusted because these two platforms are different, of course, but it is very much our objective to have a very close link between the two to avoid that these are two initiatives that exist separately because they actually have a very uh, similar purpose and uh, an audience. The other question was about the, uh, the Green City Accord and the link uh, with uh, the Covenant. So the Green City Accord is another Commission initiative, another EU initiative, uh, which has a slightly different scope because it looks at uh, not energy and climate, but rather the uh, environmental uh, dimension. So biodiversity, waste, water, etc., air quality. There is obviously a very strong connection and link with the Covenant. Um, so, I mean, the Green City Accord is a much more recent initiative. It is brand new. It is, uh, it is in, a, in a phase where it is uh, still being, being developed and, um, and, uh, it's an, and piloting in a way. So I think for now, we are sort of observing how the Green City Accord uh, succeeds and, uh, and, and who are the which are the cities that are uh, also interested and drawn to the Green City Accord. And if we see in a couple of years that uh, there is a strong demand for these two initiatives to be, um, to be linked, to be merged, uh, to be somehow uh, uh, brought together, then uh, this is definitely something we will consider. For, for us, it is a bit too early because uh, there is still a huge, uh, a huge effort to be made within the covenant itself by increasing uh, the ambition on energy and climate. And we don't want to disturb, let's say, this effort by adding all the environmental measures in the, in the mix. But uh, of course, this is very much uh, an initiative that is uh, in line and, uh, and that shares a very similar purpose. So we'll be looking at that very closely in the next couple of, uh, of months and years. Thank you, Bria. And we will go to your colleague, Veronica, now, who will tell us about uh, the um, link between the Covenant and the EU Climate Pact. Uh, thanks, Masha. I hope everyone can hear me. And I managed to unmute myself uh, successfully. 
Um, so about the, the horizon uh, question, um, in this regard, we would like to highlight uh, the new direction of the future Horizon Europe uh, with uh, an increased uh, focus on cities. Um, so this, uh, the Horizon Europe will have uh, five pillars. It is currently in the making. And uh, one of them uh, is the city mission. So we called the Horizon Europe uh, mission on climate neutral and uh, smart cities, uh, which aims for uh, 100 uh, climate neutral cities by 2030. And uh, in this way, it puts a very concrete target uh, in support of the EU Green Deal uh, targets and uh, puts cities as uh, drivers of change. And of course, we expect uh, many of the covenant uh, signatories uh, to be one of these 100 cities, as we've already uh, heard today, that there's a lot of commitment uh, towards uh, climate neutrality. And um, the precise uh, functioning of this initiative is still uh, in the making, and uh, the impact uh, was assessed on the basis of a, a discussion uh, with uh, an engagement with citizens and stakeholders uh, to reach uh, the, uh, the most uh, impact in a very inclusive uh, manner. And I think there was also a, also a question on, uh, on the climate pact. Yes, indeed. Uh, yes. I saw from, uh, yes, from Alejandra, I think, about uh, whether there is a link uh, between uh, the Covenant and the uh, EU climate pact. Uh, so yes, of course, there's a, there's a link. Um, cities can, uh, or any signatories can join the pact through the uh, covenant, for the, for the European covenant, and uh, set their own pledges. Uh, and the climate pact is kind of a platform uh, for collecting uh, different um, initiatives that are already happening and on the ground and uh, for collecting pledges. Uh, from all kinds of uh, actors and uh, different levels. Uh, so this is a very good way uh, to get connected uh, to citizens, uh, through, uh, to connect citizens through to the local uh, government action, and as well as having an overview of what is happening on the ground, as this was also one of the, uh, one of the aims of create, creating the pact, uh, to give visibility to all the existing initiatives and collect them in one place. Uh, and of course, as I also mentioned before, um, we encourage cities to have uh, their own uh, local climate pacts and uh, also engage uh, cities um, in there. So that would be the, the link. Thank you very much. So with this, we will come to an end of this part of the session but of course it's not over yet because we still have the possibility for you to join uh, for all the participants to choose the breakout session that they wish to participate in and where because there will be of course less participants it will be easier to ask uh, concrete questions so we have we're going to have three breakout sessions one is going to be on existing for existing signatories um, another one is going to be for municipalities that have not yet signed the covenant and the third one for coordinators, supporters and other stakeholders. And in each one of these, we're going to have someone from the Covenant of Mayor's office. And in the first one, actually, we're also going to have uh, Brio from, uh, from DG Enner. So, with this, I would like to thank all of you for being with us today. We excuse our little 10 minute delay and we hope that this was useful for you. We hope that this was also inspiring that uh, for the renewed ambitions that we are all wanting to, to make together. And remember, of course, those four words from the new text, which is commit, engage, act and network. So this is something that we hope that you will all be doing in your cities, municipalities uh, this, these next years so that we can reach all the new goals that we have set ourselves. So good luck everyone and please join the sessions that will be soon proposed to you. Of course, if you want to contact us, please write to this email. Of course, visit our website as well for news and updates. 
stay in touch also on social media and we will soon see the option to choose a breakout room yes i didn't say of course also veronica krupchikova from dg Ener is going to be in the second group in case you also want to ask something to the commission Welcome everyone. We are in the breakout room uh, um, to, for existing signatories. Um, we are uh, going to wait uh, one second for all the colleagues to join us. And slowly they are, they are joining the rooms, so uh, bear with us. Only one, uh, only one extra minute. Yeah, just uh, waiting one second for uh, everyone to join who are still, uh, let's say, uh, joining us in the in the breakouts. Especially for our help desk team. I think uh, Mariangela Luceri from the help desk team has now has now joined us. Hello, everyone. Hello. And uh, uh, we are uh, we have Brio as well, and uh, we are now uh, waiting for my colleague Lucy Blondel to to join us from the Covenant of Mayors Office, so that we can go through uh, a few more a few more questions with you as, uh, as signatories. Hi, Lucy. And uh, I think uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I think what we would like to do uh, with this session is as as our um, other participants will will join us. Uh, we'll uh, we'd like to start actually diving a little bit more uh, into any questions that you might have uh, for us, especially in as existing signatories and uh, linked, of course, to the new um, covenant uh, commitment as well and the new direction of travel of the covenant. So um, we are in a session where we are a little less than than before, and we also have the chance uh, also for you to, of course, unmute yourself. And, um, and indeed uh, raise a hand or uh, mute yourself to, to raise a question directly. So I see already uh, one question that has been, uh, one, one, sorry, and raised as well uh, from Pedro, Pedro Flores. Um, if you'd like to, um, or Pedro already mentioned your, your question. Yeah, hello, uh, good, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the webinar. It was very clear, uh, all the subjects about the new commitments, but uh, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, catch uh, one, uh, one condition. In Sintra, we have the 2020 commitment. We have already closed the, the, the monitoring report and we have submitted the 2030 commitment by uh, reducing uh, the CO2 emissions in 40%. I realize that the new commitment from uh, Europe is 55%, uh, correct? But we are already uh, developing our CCAP. Should we uh, uh, postpone the, the CCAP and uh, update the commitment? Or can we uh, go on with the, the CCAP and uh, give the measures the 40% the objective? The decision is yours. 
meaning that uh, we as common office give you both options. You can uh, keep uh, uh, submitting your 40% target CCAP and then monitoring on it. Uh, of course, if you then meanwhile renew your commitments to at least 55 or in any case to 20, 50 targets, uh, then uh, you might need to uh, adjust your action plans if necessary. Otherwise, you can uh, decide to wait uh, to renew their commitments and then start a totally new path uh, and submit an action plan uh, directly related to the new commitments. Okay, so if we, if you, if we develop the CCAP on the 40% uh, base, we can, in, in two years' time, we can uh, update it to the 55% and update the CCAP also. Is yes. it correct? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, meanwhile, Silvia, I noticed that in the plenary session there were uh, several uh, questions about uh, my covenant taxes. Uh, um, unfortunately, we cannot uh, address these questions uh, here uh, in the webinar because, first of all, we are not uh, currently connected to my covenant, so we don't know what's happening there. And second of all, most of the time, uh, uh, these problems are connected with uh, username or password, so to GDPR, and therefore we cannot uh, share the answer here. But please contact the help desk at info at emailers.eu, and then we will, uh, of course, uh, support you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Mariangela. And indeed, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll support you further uh, then. If um, um, I see that uh, maybe other participants uh, as well do have um, do have actually any questions for Mariangela or Lucy or Obrio as well, we are happy to to answer uh, to them. So if you'd like to either drop them in the chat and we read them out for you, or we are uh, in a smaller group, so of course feel free to raise your hand and uh, we can uh, we can indeed uh, hear your voice uh, directly. Maybe just to, uh, I had pick up a couple of questions, Mariangela and, and Lucy, and on uh, from the previous uh, session as well. And these are very, very practical questions, but I think helpful for uh, for everyone to know a little bit more where the covenant is going and how where to also read more about the new covenant commitment uh, as well. And uh, I, I read them out. Uh, they are from Elena Lacor from the Barcelona uh, metropolitan city area, uh, and uh, they she was asking. Is the new official commitment text already available? And uh, uh, what if what's necessary to do to actually sign an official document? So how to is it necessary or not? And um, what would be the procedure uh, for to do that? So I, I put these questions to you so that I think these are also of interest to uh, the all um, yeah everyone online basically. Yes, thank you, Silvia. So the commitment documents uh, are all available online on the EU Mayor's website. They are translated in all European Union languages. So you can select uh, uh, your language or, of course, you can submit the commitment document in English as you prefer. Uh, the path to register are, uh, or to renew the commitments are the same that I showed earlier. So you download this commitment document uh, from the website. If you do not find on the website, of course, you can contact the help desk and we provide you the document. Your mayor sign it and then you submit it either through the online form if you're not registered or directly to my covenant platform through the renew button that you find in uh, your pro in the profile of your organization. And that's it. It's done. Thank you, Angela. Maybe a, com a complementary information, because when we say the mayor is signing it, we say that the mayor is signing it after a, a formal decision by the full municipal council. And I guess everyone knows that now, but uh, just wanted to re-highlight this as uh, uh, of, obviously we also want this uh, to be seen as a long-term commitment and not uh, an individual uh, decision. Thank you very much, uh, Lucy and Mariangela. Um, any other questions that we can uh, that we can address uh, for you um, that may have may have cropped from uh, the present Brio's presentation, for example, before or or any other of the presentations that you've seen uh, Lucy's presentation as well on the more let's say practical journey uh, to um, to to get you through um, the new let's say the new years to come as well as part of the covenant. So we we would be happy to. 
yeah, just hear, hear your, your comments or your uh, queries on, on these. I can see one question about the baseline in the, in the chat uh, window. So maybe I can cover this one uh, yeah, once we collect more questions. Uh, and regarding the baseline, actually, we're pretty flexible because it very much depends on um, the data available uh, in your municipality. So uh, even though, let's say, at the new level, the 1990 is a baseline, you're actually in the framework of the covenant of mayors, we're, um, we're a bit more flexible because we know that usually cities uh, only have reliable uh, data set as of 2000, 2005. Usually that's, I, I think, still the most uh, commonly used base year. Um, so that's um, usually what is uh, taken as base year by our signatories, but it can be a bit before and a bit after. Indeed, from a technical point of view, you're actually in my covenant, you're free to choose your baseline. You can select from 1990 until uh, last year. So it's a very wide range of possibilities. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, both of you. I see that uh, Dario Tamburano uh, has, um, is end raised, uh, and I think Dario, you asked uh, also a couple of questions in, in plenary. So if you'd like to, yeah, just um, uh, ask us uh, the questions now, that would be great. Okay, thank you. Now, the, the, the question was about the baseline. So you answered, uh, even if we have the data from the 2015, the um, particular data um, divided into sectors, but we start the calculation from the reduction, the reduction from 2003. So we, we counted the difference between 2003 and 2015, and then the, the action from 2015 to today, or to 2020, 2030. <laughs> Sorry for my English. <laughs> you know, like a classic from Italy, that, that we have a, a strange pronunciation. <laughs> Sorry, so if I understood correctly, um... Basically, you did uh, an action plan with 2020 targets and the baseline of 2003. Yeah. And you want to submit an action plan with 2030 targets with a baseline in 2015. Is that yes. right? Yes. Using data from yes. 2003 to 2015. Okay, yeah, that's totally possible. Of course, uh, you can contact the help desk and we can have, uh, you can have two baselines in your action plan one related to the targets of your CCAP, so the one, for example, for 2015, and then you can still use uh, the data reported so far, so the baseline of your um, CAP. So we, uh, we have the, the total data from 2003, uh, and uh, the detailed data from 2015. Okay, there's not a problem, you can use both. Okay. And uh, we have the deadline in May, and the um, setup is is uh, completely is uh, ready. The uh, the text down, the, the the tables, everything is ready. And now I'm starting the political approval, but I don't think that we'll be able to be ready to um, upload the approval the plan uh, in May. What do you think that we have to do? that you know that we started to rewrite the plan um, with the green deal uh, and uh, all the new strategy from the um, european commission so we included the green deal uh, european pact for climate uh, new strategy for revenue web uh, a lot of things that are read today for the new commitment but we um, we had, uh, we had we started working about the rewriting of the plan uh, six months ago um, with the new the new deal from the commission the new strategy so i think that we'll have a little delay even if the, the plan is ready we can send the plan without approval to you just to check it and uh, meanwhile there is, there is a complex uh, procedure for approval that you know that uh, 
Roma is a big city with a lot of uh, council. Uh, it is not only one municipality. We have 15 municipalities. Everybody wants to say their opinions. So when we started, uh, a lot of person was saying that, oh, no, the Green Deal has, is too far. We have to set the plan based on the regional and national laws. So I had to, to convince a lot of political electors that we had to take into account the Green Deal and the new strategy. So there is a, some uh, problem with the political approval uh, and uh, the, the new plan you launched that is uh, coming uh, good for me, that I, I have uh, something to, <laughs> to tell uh, that, look, they are starting saying the thing that I said and told you some months ago, they are basing the new plan on Green Deal and new strategy. So I think that the political problem will be easier when the news about the new plan will be public. What do you think that, uh, can I write to you for a, um, for a new date or must the, the mayor of Rome write? No, of course you don't need to involve the, the mayor with the there's there is no need for that. Uh, you have two options. Uh, if uh, your action plan is still linked with the with your current uh, commitments of 40 percent targets by 2030 you can simply request an extension of the deadline through the platform okay um, there is a request to delay back to the reporting corner otherwise if you want to link it with the new and now we, we will maintain the the commitment uh, to 40 we uh, we are at uh, more than 51 uh, percent then later next year we will uh, have a new commitment so if, if we start again we will never reach an agreement <laughs> so we we want to to upload a new plan to make it approved so for we are near to 55 uh, percent but uh, i think that uh, it's, it's not the moment to rewrite again the plan this too much too many years that we are writing again the plans now it's time to deliver it to you. Yes, as, as I said, you can then ask for an extension. Okay. Thanks, uh, Dario. We need to, indeed, uh, that's a very important point. And uh, we'll, uh, I think Mariangela uh, went through uh, some of that indeed as, a, as an answer. I would say we have a few more minutes, not more than uh, uh, five minutes left, because uh, we are yeah. a little bit over time. Okay. Then, and so I, I would like to just um, read out uh, one, one question that comes from uh, Valencia. So it was Alejandro Gomez who posed this question in the, in the plenary. And the question is uh, actually, what about uh, the involvement of local stakeholders and citizens in the commitment uh, of the city? Are there any specific ways or maybe tools uh, to, to be able to involve men in the new commitments and, and the target to 2030 and, and 2050, if the covenant can of course help uh, with bringing in uh, um, also stakeholders into into this uh, grand uh, master plan. This is a, indeed a, a very good question, and I think it's somehow very much related to a new partnership with the EU Climate Pact. So I don't know whether you would like to cover this one, but it's exactly the, the type of uh, materials that we would like to um, to develop with their support, right? No, absolutely. Um, happy to come in here. So um, I think this is indeed sort of the next step for a lot of cities that are already very ambitious in their policies. And now the, the, the last mile, let's say, is to really engage with citizens. So we have, let's say, uh, there are two, two proposals, two offers in this new, new covenant or in this renewed covenant. Um, the one is the strong link with the climate pact. So my colleague Veronica in the uh, Q&A with everyone explained a bit that uh, so the climate pact is this new initiative, right, where you can be a city, you can be an individual, a person, or you can be a company, and, uh, and you go on to this uh, climate pact platform to, to commit individually, let's say. And uh, we have proposed that for cities, uh, the way to commit to the climate path is through the, through the covenant. So there is this first link. So basically you could have in a way a city committing to the climate pact and then seeing 
all the other individuals in their city that connected to the climate pact so they could see basically yeah like who and how many uh, people are are taking action uh, locally so that's one way that's the let's say the european solution uh, the other solution is to go very local and um, i think uh, leuven was showing a bit in their in their presentation uh, earlier how you could do that um, that's that's why we refer to local climate facts in our new commitment text so here we wouldn't prescribe a method. You know your city better than us and you would know what would work better than us. But the idea would really to sort of create a sort of, uh, of, of, of citywide movement with your citizens, giving them the opportunity to, to either yeah, join a certain type of commitment, implement certain kinds of actions, report on those actions. There could be many, many different uh, ways to do that. I think uh, Stockholm is uh, giving an award to, to citizens every year. Uh, other cities like Leuven have creating this NGO. Um, you could have simply uh, uh, a sort of, uh, you know, a, a sort of uh, chamber of citizens that would be part of, uh, uh, of, 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 of um, a system in which they would give their opinion on, on municipality uh, policies. So there are many, many, many options. But uh, and, and we would not prescribe one, but uh, definitely encourage you to look for what works best in your city. And, and, and when you find that, uh, definitely share it with us, because then we will try to sort of collect good practices across Europe and, uh, and, and be, you know, like also propose then some, some, some modalities of, uh, of engaging with citizens. It is kind of new. So we are here all, all co-creating together, I would say. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Brieu. Uh, Lucy, would you like to say uh, to to add a, a few more things, or because uh, I saw your your finger? No, no, I was like seconding <laughs> <laughs> Brieu's statement. Finger. I think he did cover it uh, very well. I very much agree. That's great. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you to all uh, the participating uh, signatories and then participants to this session. Uh, thank you all, all to uh, Mariangela, Lucie, and Brieu for being our, uh, let's say, respondents <laughs> to the questions as well. So thank you very much, all. We hope you enjoyed uh, the session, uh, and uh, you'll find, of course, again the presentations available on the uh, Covenant of Mayors website. The recording will be. Uh, equally available as well, and I think we put in the chat here, but will be, of course, also on the Covenant website, links to the commitment text as well. So it's a reference, of course, for you to, uh, to go back to as well and, and look at. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and we will be, of course, in touch soon. You can be in touch with us and the help desk as well, as we said. So thank you and have a good uh, rest of the day. Bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Hi everyone, thank you very much.